Yeah, so hello and welcome to the 8th lecture of uh, group theory. I am sorry this video is being recorded very late and tomorrow is our class. But uh, I hope you can see this video before uh, joining the class. Okay, so what we discussed uh, previously was suppose if we have a group G. G is a group and uh, suppose H is a subgroup of G. So this is a symbol. This means uh, it is H is subgroup of G. Right? Okay. And if A is an element of and A belongs to G. Then we had seen right and left cosets. So what we had seen was cosets. So right coset of H in G with respect to A, we have this. This is H A such that H changes H A. So this is right coset and uh, what is left coset? This is left coset A H such that H belongs to H. Right? So if uh, the group is abelian, then uh, these two cosets are same. Every right coset is a left coset. Why? Because uh, if G is abelian, AH equals to HA for all H in H. Right? If we, in fact, uh, every two element commute, if uh, group is abelian, every two element commute. And as a result, we have a h equals to h a for all h in you, you take any fix a, and for all h in a we have a h equals to h a, and uh, therefore then the right any right coset is also a left coset and vice versa. So then any right coset of uh, h in G is also a left coset of H in G, right? That is H A equals to A H. So when the group is abelian, uh, right cosets and left cosets, uh, they are going to be each right coset is going to be a left coset also, uh, and each left coset is conversely a right coset. Though then it is not interesting. So what what about uh, the counter example? I mean, when when it is not true. So we have to take a non-abelian group, of course. In that case, it is not true. So consider an example. We have seen this example earlier, but this is just repetition. So if you want to fast forward this video, you can do it if you are comfortable with it. So we have taken G equals to S3, the permutation group on three symbols, and H equals to uh, we have taken if you re if you recall E5. Right. So here also, if uh, a belongs to H, what we can say? If uh, a belongs to H, then uh, what is a H? A H is a H such that H belongs to H. But because H is subgroup and a belongs to H, therefore this combination a a star H, because H is subgroup, H belongs to H, a also belongs to H, then a H also belongs to H. This is a subset of H. And conversely, every H, conversely, so in that case, we can write any H in H can be written as, uh, we can write this as A, A inverse H, like this we can write, because A belongs to H, so this is also an element of uh, H, and so this is an element of, uh, this belongs to A H, and therefore we have, so then H subset of AH. So what we have is uh, when A belongs to H, so A belongs to H, this implies AH equals to H. So this will help us in computing the cosets. Right, so we have done this already, an example. So how many cosets were there? Uh, right cosets, so we'll let, let us list uh, right cosets of H in S3. And let us list here the left cosets of H in S3. Right cosets, we had found, if you remember, uh, there are three distinct right cosets. 
So one is H E, which is H, which is uh, nothing but E phi, and this is same as uh, H phi because phi belongs to, as we have seen just now, if um, A belongs to H, then A H equals to H, and the converse is also true. The, this is also true. This also you can do, if and only if uh, A H A H equals to H. Okay, so. Uh, so that is H E and then there was H uh, Psi, H Psi equals to, we have Psi and Phi Psi, right, H Psi. So Psi is multiplied from right, so E Psi is Psi and then Phi Psi and we have H uh, Psi square which was uh, Psi square and then Phi Psi square but Phi Psi square is nothing but uh, we know that is Psi Phi. So this uh, were the three, and what about the other two elements? So there was h phi psi, which is nothing but this one. So this is nothing but h phi psi, as you can see, e times phi psi. So phi psi is already here, and then uh, phi times phi psi, which is phi square psi. So phi square is identity. So you have psi, which is here. So this was h phi psi, and this was uh, h psi phi. So these were the three distinct uh, right cosets and then we have three distinct left cosets. So let us now compute what are left cosets. So we have EH, this is same as phi H, which is same as H here also, which is nothing but E phi. And then uh, psi H, what is psi H? So psi is multiplied from the right hand side, left hand side, so psi and then psi phi. And then psi square H, psi square H is uh, psi square and then psi square phi, but what is psi square phi? So this is phi psi. And what about the other two? Other two, so uh, phi psi, uh, phi psi h. So phi psi h will be this one, phi psi h. So phi psi times, when you take phi psi times identity, you get phi psi, which is already here, as you can see, right? And then uh, phi psi times phi. So that is uh, psi square that you, apply the formula okay so this was an example which we have seen that in that case all right cosets and left cosets are not uh, same as we can see uh, here we have uh, h psi is not same as uh, psi h right and okay uh, another thing is I forgot to write here so, uh, psi phi psi phi h is this so as you can see these two are not same psi is there But uh, here we have phi psi and here we have psi phi. We know that they are two different elements. They do not commute. Uh, this, this are same. So these two are same. Uh, these two are not same. What about the other one? Here we have psi square. Here also we have psi square. But here we have uh, psi phi. Uh, and here we have phi psi. So we can see these two are also not same. Right? So sorry. As we can see, these two are also not same. Psi square is still common. But H psi square and psi square H, they are not same. Psi square is there. But here we have psi phi, here we have phi psi. So as you can see, uh, right coset H psi is not same as the left coset psi H. And similarly, H psi square is not same as this. Not only this, one, what we can uh, see more is this. So let me write a remark. So one can see that uh, the right coset, for example, the right coset H psi is not a left coset. See now we are not talking about psi H, right coset H psi is not a left coset at all. Ye least mein hai. H psi is certainly not equals to psi h. Ye to humne dekha tha last time bhi. But what is to be noted here is that this thing, uh, uh, psi h, it is not there. Sorry, uh, H psi, it is not there anywhere in the list. What is this set? This is, uh, this is psi and phi psi. Psi phi psi is not there anywhere in the left cos. 
right? So here it is psi square phi psi. Phi psi is there, but psi square is there. Here there is psi. Here there is psi, but psi phi is there. So right coset, of course, h psi is not same as psi h. Here to hai nahi. Wo bhi nahi hai. Or h psi is a right coset, which is not at all any left coset. Koi left coset nahi hai. So as you can see here, uh, in a non-abelian group, not only that uh, right and left coset is not same, but it is in fact more. A right coset may not be any left coset. Not only h psi is not equal to psi h, but h psi is not equal to phi h, h psi is not equal to psi square h also. So, it koi be equal nahi ho rahe. That means uh, it's not any, it's not a left coset, right? So, now let us quickly consider one more example. Uh, consider the same thing. So, group S3 is same, but in case of uh, in place of h is we have taken a, a subgroup of order 2 here we'll take a subgroup of order 3 unique subgroup of order 3 so take g equals to s3 and take n equals to what is the subgroup of order 3 e psi psi square that is right uh, it is cyclic subgroup generated by uh, the element psi now let us consider the cosets of this so uh, let me consider right cosets here right cosets uh, of n in s3 and left cosets of n in s3 okay so right coset uh, of course when uh, psi is there so first one will be we have uh, n e equals to n equals to e psi psi square not only this this is same as n psi and it is same as n psi square why because psi and psi square they are already in n so it is same similarly left coset also will be same so we have uh, n psi n equals to psi square n equals to e n equals to n which is nothing but e psi psi square so we have left coset and now uh, what about other so let me take uh, some element which is not here inside so phi is not there so let me take n phi what should be n phi n phi should be uh, e phi so that is phi then we have psi phi phi is now we are multiplying from the right hand side and then we have psi square phi psi square phi what is psi square phi this is uh, phi psi okay so n phi is this so let us consider phi n here phi n now this is left coset phi is multiplied from the left side so phi n is uh, what phi n so phi e which is phi phi psi and phi psi square what is phi psi square which this is psi phi okay and uh, what are the other elements uh, we have other elements will be other there are two more remaining one is uh, n phi psi uh, n phi psi or oh, phi psi is here so once phi psi is here, this is going to be same as n phi psi. That also will be same. So let me write it properly. n phi psi. And uh, since psi phi is also here, this is nothing but uh, it is going to be same as uh, n psi phi. So all these are same. Similarly, here also uh, phi psi is there. So this is same as phi psi n, which is same as uh, psi phi is also there. So that is same as uh, psi phi n. So we have only two cosets, uh, two right cosets, two left cosets. Again, the number of right and left cosets are same here. As you can see, that uh, was an exercise. And now, uh, in this case, all are equal. As you can see, these two are same. And here also an E, N, N. So this is same. And these two are also same. As you can see, they are also same. Uh, phi is there. right? Psi phi is the second element here, but which is uh, already there here psi phi and then we have uh, phi psi which is also there here so as you can see this two cosets here uh, n uh, phi and phi n the right coset and left coset they uh, turned out to be same so what we note here of course n e equals to e n equals to n the first it is going to be same in all cases and then we have n phi equals to phi n 
so all uh, right coset right coset of uh, n in s3 is also left coset so now we have seen three things what are the things uh, right coset is always a left coset and left coset is always a right coset if the group is abelian in case of abelian group uh, the, the the result is not that interesting in case of non abelian group we have seen a counter example here uh, taking h equals to e5 which is nothing but the cyclic uh, group uh, subgroup generated by phi just two order group and in that case we have seen that uh, right coset h psi is not same as uh, psi h right coset h psi square is not same as the left coset psi square h not only that h, h psi is not even in the list it is not there so h right coset is not even a left coset any left coset so that uh, we have seen in non abelian group we can get a counter example like that but what is interesting is in a non abelian group right coset is also a left coset so that is interesting in abelian group it is always true non abelian group you can find an example so that also it is okay not that interesting what is interesting is a subgroup as a subgroup uh, jiska right coset and left coset all the right cosets and left cosets they are uh, same so as you can see n phi equals to phi so such subgroups uh, they are called normal subgroups actually we are not defining it like that but uh, the definition will be uh, let me state the definition so that those uh, subgroups are called normal subgroups so we state the definition a subgroup n of g first of all it has to be a subgroup a subgroup n of g uh, is said to be a normal subgroup of g if g n g inverse belongs to n for every g in g and n in n so n first of all n has to be a subgroup a subgroup n is subgroup n of g is said to be a normal subgroup if uh, if g n g inverse uh, belongs to n for every g in g and n in n Right. So let us consider some example. Very simple definition: G N G inverse. Right. So G N G inverse. So here we have an element of G on the left. It's inverse on the right, and in between we have an element of N. And this uh, product, this uh, binary operation of these three elements, that entire the uh, product should belong to N. Then for every G in G and for every N in N, not for one element. For every n in n and for every g in g, if this happens, then we say that n is normal subgroup. Uh, you are wondering why here we have seen that uh, every left coset is same as right coset for normal subgroup. But we will get there. But let us consider some uh, example. Before we consider some example, uh, let us uh, write a remark here. So what is this set? See, n is an element of uh, n is an element of n. That means. Uh, what is this set? We, we know now what is this set? G n G inverse. What is set? Elements kaise hote? So elements of this set are of the form G n G inverse such that n in n for fixed G in G. अगर कोई एक G fix कर दिया जाए, कोई भी G, it is any any G, but for some, suppose some I I take some G. And I take G capital N G inverse. So then, what how the elements will look like? So G N G inverse, where small n belongs to n. So uh, if n is a normal subgroup, by definition, what we can say here? So n is normal. G N G inverse uh, belongs to n. That means all this type of element belongs to n by this definition, as you can see. That means this must be a subset of n. Is it clear? All those elements G N G inverse. If normal is normal, G and G inverse belongs to this. That means for every G, this particular set G capital N G inverse because all the elements are of this form. Or if normal hai n, so yes, all elements kis mein hai? They they are they are in n. That means all the elements are in n. That means this is a subset of n. So that is one remark that uh, we should make here. Uh, that equivalently, what we can say. So equivalently, by the definition of normal subgroup, equivalently. Uh, we say that uh, 
n is a normal subgroup of G. Of course, when I say subgroup, uh, when I say n normal subgroup means first of all it has to be a subgroup. n is a normal subgroup of G. If uh, I can write G n G inverse, this is subset of n. That's what the definition is. What are the elements of this? So the elements of this are G and n coming from n and G inverse. And that element should be in n because e is subset of b. So if I take x belongs to a, x belongs to b. So this should be belong to n. So this is what is uh, given here. Okay. So equivalently in the set form, if I want to write normal subgroup in the set form, then a subgroup of uh, n of g is said to be normal in g uh, if uh, this set g capital N g inverse uh, that is subset. Where, what is this set? This set is this. That is subset of n. Right. So this is a definition of normal subgroup and this is the notation we use. So notation that is commonly used like this. For subgroup we know this we write like less than equals to. For normal we write this, we complete this triangle. So then this is the notation. So n is a, a normal subgroup of G. Okay, so now let us uh, consider some examples. Of course, when we look for subgroups, normal subgroups, so first we look for subgroup because n is a subgroup and what are the examples of subgroup that comes in our mind? First examples, uh, G and E, right, no, uh, the trivial or the improper subgroups. So let us check whether these are normal subgroups or not. So G and uh, E, we also write like this, but uh, we use the book notation here, we write like this. So G and E are normal subgroups. Of G, G is a subgroup of G, of course, G is a normal subgroup, why? G is a normal subgroup, what is the condition for normal? N is normal subgroup, if uh, we have G and G inverse. This belongs to N for every G in G and for every N in N. The middle element comes from the middle element comes from N. So instead of N, if I take G, so I must have G and G inverse. This should belong to middle element comes from G. Of course, this is these are all elements of G. So everything belongs to G. There is no problem for every G in G for every N in G. G n again belongs to G, G inverse product everything belongs to G. So that is fine. So this is a normal subgroup. What about this? So we must have G n, G inverse belongs to uh, the, the subgroup. And what, where this n comes from? n comes from e, this. But there is only one element which is nothing but which is e. So we have here G e, G inverse. It should belong to E. Yes, of course it belongs to E because G G inverse equals to G G inverse which is identity so it belongs to E. So is it clear? These two are normal subgroups and they are called improper normal subgroups. Anyway, they are subgroups and they are normal subgroups also. So that these are the first examples. Uh, so they are called improper normal subgroups. Right, so improper normal subgroups of G, G and E. So what is interesting is a proper normal subgroup, improper we have of course. And uh, second example, we don't have to struggle any anywhere if uh, we are looking in the abelian case. If we consider the group G is abelian, then what happens? If G is abelian, every two element come out, then you can see this G n, we can write as n G and then G, we have G inverse. So G n equals to n G and G inverse associativity, if we apply, we have n E, which is n. Of course, n is an element of n. So n must belong to n. So if the group is abelian, as we have seen, every right coset is same as left coset. So actually, eventually this is same. So if the group is abelian, then these two commutes anything first two one also commit g n equals to n g or you can commit the last two also n g inverse equals to g inverse n 
and then g g inverse will give us identity and we get n of course n is n comes from n n comes from n so that uh, n is an element of n so if the group is abelian every subgroup is normal right so these two are uh, always normal subgroups they are subgroups they are always normal subgroups they are called improper normal subgroup g and e and second example take any abelian group uh, for any subgroup of an abelian group is normal is normal in G. See this is important in G. Why we always write impro improper subgroups, normal subgroups of G in G because this elements, this element come from G. So that is why we write in G. If we have a subgroup H of G and we have subgroup uh, K of H. So K in that case it is important. K is subgroup of H, subgroup of G. So k is normal in H or k is normal in G. So that is the question. So how how do we write? So if we take um, uh, so G k G inverse. So if this G comes from H, then we say that uh, k and of course k comes from k. Then we say that k is normal in H. And but if this G comes from G belongs to G, then we say that k is normal in G also. Right, so this is important normal in G in which group we are taking. Anyway, that will come later when we consider some further examples. Uh, so uh, we have improper normal subgroups, identity and uh, the trivial group and then the group itself G. If the group is abelian, any subgroup is um, is normal. But what about non-abelian group? So non-abelian group you can check that which I leave as uh, not exercise. This is not exercise, it's uh, verification this one n this we have taken e psi psi square it is normal in s3 so I, I just write i state it as example and i leave it for you for verification as per the definition and which we do not require actually so uh, verify that verify by definition uh, the subgroup n n which is nothing but uh, which is a cyclic uh, subgroup generated by psi so psi psi square and then psi cube is identity so e psi psi square is uh, normal in s3 so just uh, verify this by definition that uh, this is a normal subgroup in s3 and uh, in that case uh, these are examples but we also verify that uh, that first example h is not normal in S3. So check whether H is normal in S3 or not. Which subgroup we will check? H equals to the subgroup generated by phi, which is nothing but E phi. Check whether this is a, a normal subgroup of Right. So this, these two things I leave you for, for verification. Yes. So what we have, uh, the definition. Again, let us recall. Uh, I know you can go back in this one video and recall, but let me recall before uh, proceeding further. So subgroup uh, N of G is said to be nor normal subgroup of G, or it's said to be normal in G. Sometimes we also write uh, normal in G. If uh, G and G inverse belongs to N for every G in G and for every N in N. Right. So this is uh, the condition. for N. And equivalently, what are these elements? These elements are nothing but they are elements of this set. So equivalently, we can say that if every element here belongs to this. So we can say that uh, G and G inverse uh, is subset of N. Because if they belong to N, then we can write that this is subset of N. Uh, for every G in G. This is because it is true for every G. So we can write that this is true for every G in G. But what about this other in other reverse inclusion? So this is already included in N. What about N? Can we show that any subset of G and G inverse? So that is uh, our next uh, result what we have to show 
in fact they are equal so what if we assume that n is normal in g then uh, g n g inverse equals to n this is what we are going to prove so let me state that as a lemma n is a normal subgroup of g if and only if we must have g n g inverse equals to n for all g in g okay, so this uh, we have in fact equality here not only subset here we have noticed that this is subset of n but uh, this lemma says that it is in fact equal so let us prove this proof it is not difficult very 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 easy so first assume that g and g inverse equals to n so assume assume that g n g inverse equals to n then of course what we have to show n is normal so for normal equivalently we know uh, subgroup is normal if uh, g n g inverse must be subset of n so if they are equal anyway they are subset so nothing to prove so then what we have g n g inverse is a subset of n so of course equal so i can write it as subset if it is subset of n that means what if I take any element of this set and that belongs to n, so a subset of b means x belongs to a implies x belongs to b. So what an element of this looks like is element case over so it will be like this g and g inverse. So this is an element of this but it is subset of n so that belongs to n. So that is nothing but uh, we can clearly say that uh, then so that is uh, g n g inverse. Right, so this we assume this is for all g this is true for all g so here also for all g in g this is true subset then g and g inverse belongs to n for all uh, g in g of course for all in g in g but now we can take n from this n any n so that means uh, for all n in n so hence n is a uh, normal in g hence n is a normal subgroup of g Now the converse. So for converse, what we assume n is normal in G. Conversely, assume that n is normal in G. So that means what? n is normal in G. So we have then for any G. what we have g n g inverse is subset of n so that much we can conclude for any g in g by the definition of normal see here by the definition of normal equivalently we can say that g n g inverse is subset of n what we have to prove we have to prove it is equal so now what we have to prove so this is already subset of n so what we have to prove to prove only thing what we have to prove n is subset of uh, g and g inverse right so let me write here what we are given we are given this for any g uh, this is so we we have assumed normal so normal means uh, at least this much we can conclude so let me call it number one now we have to show this is subset of uh, any subset of g and g inverse so what we do let us try let uh, n belongs to n then we have to show that n belongs to g and g inverse so we want n to be written in this form so how do we write in this form so that is uh, some hidden information is there which we have to write in such a way so then we can write n equals to how do we write this in this form so we can write g g inverse n then uh, we have we have to apply inverse of g here so g and g inverse so see i have written like this now that means what this is uh, i can write like g g inverse n and g g inverse 
okay so see this is an element of something like g x g inverse so it is whether it belongs to this or not g and g inverse so that is a question but what is this this you can write as g uh, g inverse n and then uh, this is nothing but g inverse inverse so which is uh, yes so it is of this form so if i call g inverse as uh, x then what is this x n uh, sorry x n x inverse tyanti jojo am kai there is no magic here so g and then x n x inverse where what is x x equals to g inverse uh, is an element of g and uh, what about this this belongs to this belongs to g n g inverse why because i have taken n in n and any x in g so i i know this so by 1 this belongs to so by 1 so this belongs to g and g inverse and again by 1 which is subset of which is subset of uh oh so we have already got so this is subset of g and g n is subset of g and g inverse is it clear so how do we apply one here so by one you can see by one uh see here we have x n x inverse so this is an element of uh, this belongs to x capital n x inverse where x is in g and n in n but uh, we know this is a subset of n so this is subset of and therefore x and x inverse belongs to n this is what we have got x and x inverse belongs to n so this element belongs to n so then g and this is an element of n therefore g this element and g inverse this belongs to g n g inverse so i hope this is clear just uh, refer it once again if it is not clear in the book there is another alternative argument that also you can do so that will discuss in the meet tomorrow uh, that argument book argument it is very much similar here we instead of element we are going to use a set and we are going to use this only one so by this property only it follows right so ultimately what we have proved if um, n is normal subgroup of g then g n g inverse equals to n for every g in g not only one g for every g in g but if i multiply g on the right from both sides then what happens so it's not remark i'm just stating it so n is a uh, normal in g if and only if g and g inverse what we proved is g and g inverse so in fact here we have proved that uh, n is subset of uh, g and g inverse So by one and two we are done. Call it two. Okay, so I was writing this. So g and g inverse equals to n for all g in g. So this implies uh, g n g inverse g equals to n g. I multiplied g on 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 the right on both sides from the right. So this is what g n equals to n g. so what happens so that means uh, and this is also true so converse which you are going to prove so but uh, g n g inverse equals to n implies this so that means if n is normal in g then this is true and if this is true then g n equals to n g what is g n it is left coset of n in g and what is n g it is right coset so ultimately you see where we are started in the example that uh, we were interested in looking for subgroups for which left coset is same as right coset and now you don't need to verify this but i insist you verify this example that n equals to psi subgroup generated by psi is normal in s3 by definition and check also h whether this is a normal subgroup of s3 or not but what we have got the condition here if uh, n is normal in g then g n equals to n g that means left coset is same as right coset and that is what we have verified in the example here 
so n has only two left cosets and two right cosets so n which is a trivial coset and another one is n phi which turned out to be phi n so in that case uh, n phi equals to phi n e n equals to n e for all g yeah? so this is not true for only one this should be true for all g yes here it is all g so n g equals to this for all g in g so this is uh, the remark so let us write this as lemma so the statement of the lemma now we are going to prove this uh, but before this lemma let me add one more remark so this is number one and number two so note that again this is important as we have seen in the case of coset so note that uh, g n g inverse equals to n does not mean this does not mean that uh, g n g inverse inverse every element of this equals to n so this is not true right so one should take care of this in mind so that means this is uh, not true right so this is and we can consider an example also for example in the above example we had seen so what is phi n phi inverse phi n phi inverse is what phi inverse is same as phi so this is phi n phi uh, since phi inverse is also same as phi as phi square is identity phi square is identity so phi inverse is also phi uh, and what is phi and phi so this is what is n n is nothing but uh, psi e psi psi square so phi dot e phi dot psi and then phi dot uh, psi square since n is e psi and psi square so oh so this is uh, one more phi is there phi and phi so here also phi here also dot phi and here also dot phi so we have phi e phi so that is phi square here we have phi psi phi what is phi psi phi psi is a uh, psi square phi and then phi and then uh, what is phi psi square phi psi square is nothing but psi phi and then again phi this phi so this is what this is e this is uh, psi square and this is psi so this as a set this is uh, what we have seen right as i said but phi psi phi inverse what is phi psi phi inverse phi psi phi uh, inverse is phi psi phi and this is uh, what is this so this is nothing but phi psi square so this is equals to psi square which is not psi Right, so G N G inverse does not mean that it is equals to N. You can see phi psi phi inverse is not equals to phi. It is equals to psi square. Right, is it clear? So that uh, one should take care in mind that uh, that is as a set it is this, but it does not mean that the element uh, is like this. What it means when these two are equal? So if I take an element here. G N G inverse that element belongs to N so that is equals to some N prime where N prime is in it so such thing one has to take care of and do not confuse okay so now uh, our first observation was this so if G N N is normal then G N G inverse equals to N multiply by G we have G N equals to N G that means every right coset is same as uh, left coset and left coset is same as right coset and the converse is also true which is very important lemma so let us state that so that result I am stating here. So n is uh, a normal subgroup of G. If and only if every right coset. every right coset of uh, n in g is also a left coset 
of NNG. So again the proof is very very simple. So first assume that uh, N is normal in G. So first assume that N is uh, normal in G. Then we use make the use of previous lemma. So then by previous lemma just now we approved what was the lemma n is normal if and only if here we have if and only if n is normal if and only if uh, we have g and g inverse so n is a normal subgroup of g if and only if g and g inverse equals to n so we use the fact that g and g inverse equals to n so by previous lemma uh, for all g in g we must have g n g inverse equals to n so but then this implies g n equals to n g multiply g on the right side oh, I mean from right on both sides so then that is what we have proved hence every left coset is same as the right coset so that one side is done hence every left coset of uh, n in g is a right coset of n in g right so one side is done now so if n is normal by previous lemma g and g inverse equals to n so g n equals to n g so every left coset is same as right coset for every g in uh, g so this is done so now conversely uh, suppose every left coset is same as a right coset so conversely assume conversely assume that every left coset of uh, n in g is uh, also a right coset of n in g so we assume that every left coset is same as uh, right coset but that does not mean g n equals to n g so then we can say that uh, now we have to prove normal normal ke liye kya prove karna padega we have to prove this if we can show this then we are done so for showing this we, we can show this g n equals to n g it looks like it is given but it's not given what is given given is that every left coset this is left coset is same as is also a right coset but right coset matlab ye g wala right coset hi kyun hoga gn equals to ng that is the thing that is only thing we have to show if we can show this then we are done so uh, let g belongs to g any arbitrary g we take and then uh, consider the left coset which is a left coset consider the left coset gn by hypothesis this is also a right coset so this is also a right coset of n in g and uh, say this is uh, n a for some a in g suppose ye n a so that means so that is g n equals to n a bas khali prove itna karna hai a equals to g if we show that g n equals to n g then we are done we apply g inverse both sides so g and g inverse equals to n n is normal by the previous lemma so only thing we have to show that a equals to n so n is subgroup because n is subgroup so g belongs to since uh, n is subgroup subgroup mein identity to aayega hi so n contains identity since n is subgroup g equals to i can write as is ka element agar likhna hai how how can i write this g equals to g times e g dot e where e e belongs to n e belongs to this n right so this e is an element of i can consider this as an element of g n that means g belongs to g n right so g belongs to g n and hence what we must have g belongs to because g n equals to n a ye g n jo left coset tha 
that is also a right coset but only what we have to show that is also right coset but with respect to the same element g small g so suppose uh, we have g so g n equals to n then we have g equals to g e because subgroup has the identity over so this we can write as g dot e which is an element of g n and therefore g belongs to g n and therefore g belongs to the right coset n a but uh, what we know but we we know uh, uh, yes so we we know g we can write as g equals to e g e g also we can write and e g kis ka element hai e g is an element of e n which is n right so g belongs to now n ye that that is oh sorry it is uh, belongs to so that is g belongs to the left uh, where we have taken right coset right uh, so not e n let us take uh, n e because uh, we have to show that this is same as uh, um, n g i want to show that a equals to g so i have to show this is n g so we write as e g so yahan pe g likha na ab yahan pe e g likhte hain e dot g e dot g kis ka element hoga n e mein nahi dikhana hai we have to show that this is in n n g so e dot g kis mein hai because e is in n so this is in n g so that that means g belongs to the right coset n g ye to humko pata hi hai g belongs to the right coset but g belongs to n a also but we know we have seen that uh, this cosets are nothing but equivalence class and any two um, equivalence class they are either identical i mean they are the same or they are disjoint so g belongs to both so that means uh, so we know that since we know that any two right cosets of uh, n in g are either identical or either same so are either identical or disjoint okay ya to ek bhi element common nahi hoga ya to dono same honge but uh, we have g belongs to n a also and uh, g belongs to n g also yeah i'm writing is uh, very in in detail this much explanation is not required actually we can write directly so n a intersection n g so intersection to either it has to be empty or it has to be the whole set but intersection is non empty so that means uh, this implies n a equals to n g and hence what was n a n a was here by this uh, left coset g n equals to the right coset n a but n a turned out to be n g and hence uh, we have so n a turned out to be n g so g n from the above upar se kya likh sakte g n equals to uh, n a n a tha uski jagah n g likh sakte hai but this implies g n g inverse equals to n and this implies n is normal is it clear so very simple proof uh, just go through it once if you find it difficult anyway we are going to repeat in the meet tomorrow which i am i really doubt you will be able to see it because it's already late so in the morning if you get time to see then it is fine otherwise we'll discuss everything in the meeting okay so uh, what we have proved in fact something more not only g n equals to n g every uh, yes that is what we have proved in fact every right coset of n in g is a left coset also in g right okay so now let us proceed further so now uh, we have seen hk what was hk hk was something like this hk where h belongs to h and k belongs to k right so this was hk now what if we take k equals to h so taking k equals to h अगर k इक्वल टू एच ले लेंगे तो क्या आएगा एच एच तो क्या होगा एच एच स्क्वायर हो जाएगा विल इट बी एच स्क्वायर लेट एस सी एच एच सो इट विल बी लाइक एच वन एच टू राइट नॉट एच स्क्वायर सी देर इज अ डिफरेंस एच एच फर्स्ट एलिमेंट इज कमिंग फ्रॉम हियर सेकेंड इज कमिंग एच स्क्वायर नहीं 
that square b i is okay but uh, even two different elements also can come so h1 h2 such that h1 and h2 both belongs to h so because h is subgroup what we have this is subset of h because h1 h2 they also belongs to h right because h is subgroup so since h is subgroup uh, h1 hh is subset of h so it's not h square it is subset of h because h is a subgroup on the other hand so on the other hand h ko bhi hum iska subset dikha sakte hain how h we can write as h equals to h e right, right coset or left coset h e is subset of h h because e belongs to h so h e is subset of h h so that means That means if I take k equals to h, so what will we get? H h equals to um, we have got h, so the hence h h equals to h. So if we take this product of h with h, we get again h. It is not h square, nothing like that, right? Okay. So now what this important observation, what we can make here is, so suppose we start with a normal subgroup. So suppose. n is a normal subgroup of g and uh, we take two elements a b belongs to g right then we have two cosets right cosets what what are those cosets with these two elements we can form two right cosets n a and n b so then uh, n a and let us multiply this with nb what is this so this we can write as this two so n a n b uh, but what is a n a n is a left coset of n in g but because it is normal what we have proved a n equals to n a just in the previous lemma so this is nothing but this is n and n a b why since uh, n is normal by previous lemma we proved that n a equals to a n and now uh, consider this n n so what was n n n n we have shown so n n a b which is nothing but n n is uh, n n is n here just h h equals to h so that is why we made this remark so this is n ab now if a and b belongs to g g is a group so ab belongs to g so this is nothing but uh, it's a which is right coset again right coset of n in g but uh, this is with respect to with respect to ab ab belongs to g so that means uh, I can now multiply two right cosets n a n b if n is normal huh? otherwise this is not possible you can see here uh, this a n equals to n a this is not possible so otherwise so if n is normal so n a n b so if I take uh, any two right cosets if I multiply them so what is n a n b going to be it is n a b that is nothing but it is right coset of n in g with respect to the element a b the product of this two a and b so that means the product of two right coset is also a right coset in g if n is because we have assumed suppose n is non so that let me write uh, a nice uh, statement so that again it's a lemma so it says it says that a subgroup n of g n of g is normal in G in fact here we have assumed normal with in fact the what is true is both if and only if so it is normal in G normal subgroup of G if and only if a product of two right coset is again a right coset of n in G product of two right cosets
of n in g is again right coset of n in g right so in the proof i can assume first what we assume so first we assume that uh, n is normal subgroup of g then what we should do, should show product of two right coset is also right coset we already shown here n a n b equals to n a b so that means one part we already done in the previous uh, remark so let me copy paste that same thing here so this entire thing i can consider this as proof right sorry let it be yeah so it, it is is it okay so what we have proved half this one we have proved so n is a normal subgroup of g then what we have proved that product of two right cosets take two elements a and b in g take n a n b right cosets uh, because n is normal a n equals to n a and n and we know that is n again so that is n a b so product of two right cosets n a and n b it is again a right coset which is nothing but n a b and now converse product of two right cosets is a right coset we assume that and show that n is normal so normal you can show by definition also uh, by previous uh, results also you can see and show any equivalent condition so that uh, i'll leave that one as exercise so conversely so let me write uh, conversely uh, assume now we are assuming a product of two right coset is a right coset we are not assuming n a b equals to n n a n b equals to n a b that is not assumed we are assuming n a n b is some right coset n c not not clearly n c at least n or you take n x or <laughs> whatever uh, the notation you find comfortable with so conversely assume that a product of two everybody cases are hence in you are the video conversely assume that product of uh, two right cosets of n in g is also a right coset of n in g so now we are assuming product of two right cosets n a times n b is also a right coset let us say n x anything or n c jo n c gam to hai to vaan to nahi ane vaan cho to nahi aave yes so uh, so that is another right coset but then we have to show that it is normal so that part i leave as exercise so this converse part show that n is normal show that n is a normal subgroup of g okay so now we can observe some more things so we have already product of two right coset is a right coset and if we take the trivial coset n a and we take n e which is nothing but n a n n e is nothing but it is n but which is same as uh, n a n our jo normal subgroup hoy if n is a normal subgroup then this thing a n will be a uh, a n this we can write as n a which is n n a which is nothing but n a so then uh, see what we have got here n a n e equals to n a so this right coset and this right coset will give us the same right coset that means this kind of x like an identity cosets are multiplied now not the group elements 
right? So this is uh, multiplication of two cosets, N A and B. That is also a right coset. Two right cosets are multiplied is a right coset. There is an element. There is a right coset which when multiply with some any right coset we get back the same right coset. That means it serves an identity. What about associativity? So associativity also one can do like this. So we have N A and then N B and C which is nothing but N A. This we have seen N B C which is this is same as N A B C not KBC it is an ABC and uh, now we have to separate out uh, C part so this we can write as an AB and C so which is nothing but oh C is given and C to pass it per se so an AB and uh, we can write this as an C product of this cosets so this is nothing but an A and B and N C so this is uh, associative also so here it is associative this is identity product of two right cosets n a and b is also right coset that means it is closed bakisuri inverse so what is what should we multiply to uh, n a n a is also multiply the identity our identity is nothing but n e what should we multiply here so we should multiply by a with to a inverse here so this is n a inverse which is we know n a and b is what n a b so n a a inverse so which is nothing but n e which is n so inverse property is there associativity is there uh, identity is there and closure too yes so that means uh, set of all right cosets so bani gaya group bani gaya set of all right coset is a group so as i mark my remark from this day onwards uh, i whatever remark i do i i count them in a box so let me make a box here so this is i made some remark already what we know is uh, this n a sorry uh, now no more boxes already what we know is n a n b equals to n a b product of two right coset is a right coset there is a right coset n a multiply by n e you get n a same back so that means there is an identity element which uh, is, there is an identity right coset then uh, associative also holds n a n b n c equals to n a n b and then n c uh, and then finally inverse so in uh, so that means uh, the set of all right cosets forms uh, a group under this operation which operation this is the operation which uh, which makes a group so this operation is defined two right cosets how to multiply two right cosets so we multiply like this multiplying the elements uh, which makes the coset a b a so we have taken n a b right so that uh, first of all we should give some notation so let us uh, fix a notation so i write here and have to add one new page sorry yes so let us fix a notation so let g quotient n this is read as so it is a uh, read as g quotient as you have seen there are you already seen i think in group theory quotient you have, must have seen vector space also we take quotient so everywhere the quotient uh, thing is there field also quotient ring also ring quotient ideal and uh, field also we can take uh, this quotient algebra also we take quotient right so this is read as g quotient n let uh, g quotient n denote uh, the denote the set of all right cosets of n in g right so what we have shown here above in this box is uh, that it is it is a normal uh, a, sorry it is a it is also a group the set of all right coset g quotient n when it is a group when n is normal because everywhere you we are using n a b 
एन ए एन बी इक्वल टू एन ए बी कब लिख सकते हैं प्रोडक्ट ऑफ टू राइट कॉसेट इज राइट कॉसेट लेमा इज देर इफ एन ओनली इफ एन इज सी इफ एन ओनली इफ एन इज ए नॉर्मल सब ग्रुप ऑफ जी देन ओनली प्रोडक्ट ऑफ टू राइट कॉसेट ऑफ एन इन जी इज ऑल्सो अगेन अ राइट कॉसेट सो एन ए बी इक्वल टू एन ए एन बी सॉरी हाँ यस एन ए बी इक्वल टू एन ए एन बी दैट इज ओनली ट्रू वेन एन इज नॉर्मल सो जी क्वेश्चन एन वेन वी एज्यू मैन इज नॉर्मल वी हैव प्रूव दैट दिस इज द क्लोजर प्रॉपर्टी सो दिस वन इज क्लोजर प्रॉपर्टी जी क्वेश्चन टेन इज क्लोज बिकॉज वी टेक एनी टू राइट कॉसेट इट इज देर दिस वन इज आइडेंटिटी दिस एलिमेंट इज आइडेंटिटी देन वी हैव एसोसिएटिविटी एंड फाइनली वी हैव एवरी एलिमेंट हैज एन यूनिवर्स सो जी क्वेश्चन एन वेन एन इज अ नॉर्मल सब ग्रुप जी क्वेश्चन एन फॉर्म्स अ ग्रुप द आर्ग्यूमेंट इज राइट अप देर सो लेट इज राइट दैट थियरम लेट जी बी अ ग्रुप एंड एन बी वी वी मस्ट एज्यूम नॉर्मल सब ग्रुप एन बी अ नॉर्मल सब ग्रुप of g then the set g quotient n is also a group or this is not also uh, this is a group under the operation what is the operation define operation is uh, we define n a Uh, times n b. This we define as n a b. This is also a group for uh, n a n b in G quotient n. So under this operation, uh, this also forms a group. Right? This group is called proof already we have seen above. So proof I am not writing. See so you have to write it uh, in a precise. uh decent manner right so uh, this group is called see this is not a subset of g the g in elements now a g question n is what are those that those are the elements they are cosets their cosets are subsets of g not elements of g g in andar kya elements are a belongs to g b belongs to g g question n in andar kya elements are they are the cosets n a n b and also they are not element of g so this is not fact subset of g Do not consider it as subset of G. It is totally different, right? G quotient n is a collection of subsets of G. Okay, what subset? So the right cosets, right? And I either we take right coset or left coset because when we assume that n is normal, uh, every right coset is same as left coset. And this group is called the quotient group. This group is called the quotient group. Or sometimes it is called the factor group right so this is called a factor group of uh, g by n or we call the quotient group of g by n so we are taking g quotient n right so g by n we taking the quotient group or it is called the factor group because we are taking g by n so we are dividing g in this uh, set of all cosets so this is definition of quotient group first we have to show that this group that already uh, we have seen above so finally what is order of g quotient n right g quotient n mein kitne elements honge what is definition of g quotient n g quotient n is nothing but it is uh, the set of all right cosets so we have seen this definition somewhere previously also what is the set of all right cosets of n in g it is nothing but index of n in g so uh, order of g question then so this is nothing but set of all set of all right cosets of n in g so order of g question then 
so therefore order of g quotient n is but nothing but g index of n in g what is index number of uh, right cosets of n in g so that means a set of our right cosets in a kettle element so that is the same as number of right cosets of n in g so that is index of n in g and as a result finally uh, we can state the lemma that if it is a finite group then what is the order so if uh, g is a group and n is a normal subgroup of g Uh, not only just group g is a finite group let us consider a uh, finite group this is what i said but i did not write so if g is a finite group and n is a normal subgroup of g then uh, order of g quotient n is nothing but order of g upon order of n and the proof follows from the definition so by definition what is order of uh, g quotient n is nothing but the number of distinct right cosets of g in of n in g distinct right cosets of n in g which is nothing but by definition which is index of n in g but when we have seen this when it is finite but from the proof of Lagrange's theorem uh, last time there is a finite way so what is index index we can write as order of uh, g upon order of n right so order of g upon n so this is what we have proved the formula order of, order of g quotient n is nothing but order of g upon order of n so order of g divided by order of n this is g quotient n Right, so this is not g upon n. This is g quotient n. Uh, so that that is it. So here I stop, and I don't know. I have. Uh, I'm sorry for this uh, late video, but we'll again repeat this in the meeting tomorrow, and then, uh, if required, you can watch the video later after the meet also. So that is it. Thank you.